Um, hopefully he'll be signing in soon. Uh, we have 10 members on the committee, so we need six for quorum. And currently we have uh, four. So we need two more for a quorum, but we can still start with uh, some of the announcements and updates. Uh, Hello, this is Naima. I think we just met quorum. Yeah. We actually have six people. We have Mansita, we have Daniel, we have Alexis, Great. Luana, okay. and... Got it. Yep. I see that they've just signed in. So we now have quorum. That's excellent. Um, great. Okay. Very good. Um, so next Thursday, the 19th, we have a public scoping meeting for the Lily Brown Playground, which has an allocation from uh, council member Sean Abreu for a desperately needed renovation. Um, I am hoping that everybody helps to spread the word on that and Jennifer will have some more information on that in uh, her update, I'm sure. But if folks, hold on just a moment while I get rid of that phone call. So sorry about that. That was my cousin calling me to tell me that he's uh, a grandfather and um, might be going to a bris on Tuesday. Yay. Anyway, uh, back to live action. You know, life just doesn't stop. Um, oh, that's such good news. So yeah, I'm really hoping that, uh, you know, just as general members of the community board, we can help to spread the word, but particularly for folks who live in that uh, Southern part of the district, who can help spread the word on uh, the scoping meeting for the Lily Brown Playground. Um, as much as we appreciate the Parks Department coming to this committee, not once, but three times for the uh, project that we're gonna be hearing about later. Can somebody please uh, mute themselves? Thank you. Um, it would be great if we have maximum public input at the upper, at this public scoping meeting so that we can really get a lot of public feedback um, when the uh, for when the capital design team presents that project so that we don't have to make them keep coming back to the committee to present whatever it is that they come up with. Um, that uh, two days later on Saturday, January 21st at 11 a.m., we have the um, celebration of Sally Fisher's life at the Cathedral of St. John the Divine. If you need additional information about that and about how to RSVP, please uh, contact me. And um, you can also find that information on her Facebook page. Her family posted it there and the community board will be sending out another a reminder about that. Um, Paola, if you are listening in, if you could just resend that information to both the community board list and the community board public list would be great. Um, I want to let people know that our resolution from December on the million more trees passed unanimously, yay, with 31 votes. Um, Jennifer, um, oh, for people who were, who were wondering and, and curious about the uh, Henry Hudson Parkway Greenway, it is now open. It is beautiful. Um, that project was a long time in coming. So I'm happy that it has been completed. And I think that's it for my um, updates and announcements, other than to ask that Jennifer, if you've got any information. Um, nope, sorry, Fort Washington Park and Pathways isn't you, that's, um, that's John. So scratch that. Okay, um, next up. Oh, and thank you to um, Alexis for taking for taking notes. Um, I'm not really able to do that because I'm down one hand. All right, looking at 
Oh, I also want to just give folks a roadmap of this evening's meeting. I don't have the ability to, to share screen because um, I don't have enough uh, capacity on my, on my uh, screen, my home screen. But uh, this agen the agenda for this evening's meeting includes um, the usual programming updates from cultural and friends of parks groups, um, which we have a few in attendance. Uh, Jennifer is going to give a really brief report. Again, we're not going to do a, a lengthy Q and A um, because I want to leave enough time for uh, the main event, which is the presentation by the Parks Capital team of their uh, re-modified design. And I want to make sure that we have enough time to really discuss that in a robust way and to um, pass a resolution. Uh, that summarizes whatever is the discussion that we're about to have. And then at the request of our new incoming chair, uh, she asked for all of the committees to have at their January meetings a short 20 minute, 30 minutes at the most uh, discussion on, you know, what are our plans for 2023? What are our goals? What are the things that we want to be looking out for? Uh, and then it is my uh, fervent hope that we can end this meeting by 8.30, quarter to nine. Um, so that's a roadmap for this evening's meeting. Um, I'm looking to, oh, I also want to congratulate uh, Classical, is it Classical Theater of Harlem for getting a $25,000 uh, grant from um, Congressman Espayat, each uh, congressional member has the ability to make uh, grants to cultural organizations in their district. And I just received an email today from the Congressman stating the, the um, 25 organizations that got grants ranging from 2000 to, I think 25,000 is the, it was the largest grant. I might be wrong about that, but um, Classical Theater of Harlem was one of the recipients. Yeah, yeah. That, Ale that Alexis had a little something to do with that application. So good job. Um, and without further ado, I want to get into programming updates. Uh, if there are folks who want to speak to give updates about what's going on in, with their organizations, raise your hands up. I'll take you in the order in which I see your hands raised. And I see, first up, we have Martin Collins from NOMA. Marty, you're on. Thank you, Liz. Good evening, everyone. I want to wish everybody a very happy and healthy and prosperous new year. We have coming up the 21st Uptown Art Stroll in Washington Heights, Inwood, and West Harlem. And uh, by the end of this week, we will announce the poster contest we have Enhanced the prizes, the grand prize first place winner will be $1,500, uh, second prize $750, third prize $500, and on the website, nomanyc.org, will be posted all of the details. The 21st Uptown Art Store will open on Thursday, June 1st at the Sugar Hill Museum from 6 to 8.30 p.m. Uh, Liz, I sent you and Nobles a report last night, and I will amend it to... Uh, include a uh, update of that for your minutes. That'll be at the Sugar Hill Museum on Thursday, June 1st, the opening of the Uptown Art Stroll. We have four Monday evening concerts in June planned, including two in Board 12. First on June 5th, the Dykeman Farmhouse, and the second, June 12th, at the Audubon Terrace at the Hispanic Society Museum. There will be scores of exhibitions, events, and open studios uptown throughout the entire month of June. The stroll closing is from 6 to 9 p.m. on Thursday, June 29th at the United Palace. We will have again a very uh, popular event last, again this year, a pre-stroll event with uh, multifaceted American jazz pianist and composer Emmett Cohen. He'll be joined by a multi-Grammy nominee saxophonist uh, Miguel Zenon at the Palm School of the Arts at 7.30 p.m. on Tuesday, May 9th. Uh, we will have the 13th annual Women in the Heights exhibition. The call for art will begin on June, uh, January 19th. That's January 19th. Please see our website for details. And our current exhibit, The Graham Uptown, is on display during gallery hours, 1 to 5 p.m., Tuesdays and Thursdays through February 11th. As you may have heard, the Tonys are coming to the United Palace on Sunday, June 11th, and Noma 
looks forward to this exciting new partnership. And for more information on all of these and many more programs and activities, please read this week's newsletter on our website, nomanyc.org. Thank you. Great, thanks so much. And just, um, you may have missed at the beginning of the meeting, uh, Nobles is no longer on this committee. Uh, so you don't need to send him uh, stuff for you know the minutes or whatnot. Uh, if you could forward uh, this evening, um, uh, Alexis is taking minutes. So if you could just forward whatever it was that you had sent to me and Nobles onto Alexis, that would be great. I mean, I could do it too, but it's hard for me to do that while I'm running the meeting. So if you could just do that would be uh, excellent. Copy. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, next up, we've got, I actually wanna, uh, Stephanie, do you have something? Cause last month you had some, uh, some announcement, but you weren't able, your, your, uh, um, your audio didn't seem to be working. So I wanna give you the chance to talk if you've got announcements to make this evening. Hey Liz, thanks so much y'all. I super appreciate that. This is Stephanie from Riverside Park. Um, the North Park Outreach Coordinator or work from 125th to 181st Street. I actually don't have any updates uh, today, but I will for next uh, okay. month. We do have a teen core program coming up in the summer, but our application isn't live yet. But I do want to share that next month. But thank you so cool. much. Sounds good. Uh, next up, we've got. Um, oh, wait a second. I'm promoting Emily Marte to a panelist. Wait, that didn't seem to work. There we go. And Barbara Frazier. Unmute, okay. Yeah, I wanted to report from the rain garden. Mm -hmm. uh, usually the garden sleeps after the holiday party uh, until March, but that's not the case this year. Our very hearty troop of toddlers and preschoolers is continuing uh, bundled up with their story hour on Thursdays. So please bring your preschooler to the story hour in, in uh, conjunction with New York Literacy. Uh, and also we're planning with the Met Cloisters to have uh, events there in the garden, but story hour is on. Also on a sad note, uh, Sally Fisher, our ring board member and you know parks committee member her funeral is this is the 21st of january um please contact her sister if you wish to attend it's cathedral of saint john the divine i also call attention i sent this to paulo we've had much discussion in the board about the rats problem east 86th street has had great success with using carbon monoxide in the rat tunnels and i bring that to our committee's attention and also to Jennifer's attention. If we could uh, consider that more in the problem around the plaza with the restaurants and in the ring garden. And so I want that sort of officially recognized as something to explore. And I sent Paula an article in New from Newsbreak, which shows that they eradicated an in extreme infestation on East 86th Street, over a hundred tunnels, thousands and hundreds and hundreds of rats in a real crazy situation by using the carbon monoxide uh, run through the tunnels and it, in a matter of days eradicated the problem. So let's look at that as a committee and the ring garden would be much uh, appreciative if this could really help. So that's it from the ring. Cool. Um, I just want to say, I. I don't want to say I love the idea of carbon monoxide because I mean, just the whole thing, rats are gross and poisoning them is gross, but that is a great idea. Um, but I do want to say that that's not so much this committee. It's very much, um, you know, I don't think it's something that we really need to talk about a whole lot in committee. It's kind of a, an obvious asked and answered. You've raised it. That's a great concern. Um, Jennifer can take that back to the operations yeah. team, and then you know we can just follow up offline. I don't. I exactly. Think, exactly. I think what needed to be done just happened, and we can move it along. But thank you very much for raising that. Uh, the ring is in uh, rather a unique position by virtue of its proximity to so many restaurants, and um, you know that which feeds people also who and Jennifer can report back on how it works and how it goes exactly exactly 
We well, have also, it, Barbara, but I can't guarantee we can get it up here, but I can certainly ask. Yeah, also over by the river, the uh, Stephen Levin Garden and such, anything that's near water in the river may also have a rat problem and, and to look at that. Mm -hmm. So thank you. I don't think it's unique to us. Water, water proximity is also an issue yeah. for rats. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I just want to call out that in the um, in the Q&A, which we can see, but other people, but the public cannot, uh, Noemi Diaz says, thanks Jennifer Hoppe and Parks for more lighting within Parks for the Running Clubs. So uh, thank you, Jennifer, for uh, your role in working with DOT on that. Um, and that's actually a good segue. I'm not seeing any more hands up. Um, so I think we can move to the next item, which is uh, Jennifer's brief uh, report. You know, again, just sort of whatever's, whatever's new, and, new and different uh, from last month. Sure. Um, so- And just, if you can also send it to- uh, Alexis. Me and Alexis would be great. Got it. Okay. Just on the, um, uh, um, we've got a winter woodland hike with the Urban Park Rangers on Saturday the 14th. There's a bald eagle watch on Saturday, January 21st. Um, the Fort Tryon Park Trust is working with storyteller Rachel Harrington, who's off, often at the Sugar Hill Children's Museum, for an explorer story uh, nature walk. Um, Saturday, January 21st through Fort Tryon's Alpine Garden, which is like a scavenger hunt garden. Um, we've got our next stewardship day, Forest Restoration Day in Inwood Hill Park on Friday, February 3rd from 10 to 12. Um, and if you haven't yet, um, February 5th, we've got a hybrid, the next hybrid water tower tour. Um, special thanks to council member De La Rosa, um, she worked with Parks on January 2nd. We had over 300 people come and visit the High Bridge Water Tower. It was pretty incredible. Um, lastly, if you don't want to leave your couch, uh, but want to explore the outdoors, um, the Fort Tryon Trust is having author Leslie Day give a virtual um, workshop, How Animals Survive Winter on Sunday, February 12th. All of that can be found at northernmanhattanparks.org slash events. Um, some quick announcements. I wanna thank everybody for bringing their trees to our chipping site at Inwood Hill Park for Mulch Fest. Um, over a thousand trees at Inwood Hill were converted into mulch over the two day chipping uh, program there. Um, just to help anybody who's still holding on to their tree, you can still put your tree out on the curb for sanitation to collect until January 14th. And sanitation will convert those trees into mulch. So you haven't missed the boat if you put your tree out uh, between now and the 14th. Um, speaking of trees, I'm sure everyone has read the, uh, the recent press. Parks has uh, released its updated tree map. Um, you can zoom in on trees on your block and it gives you, it shows you a rundown of how many harmful particulates they're removing from the air, how they're, uh, how much stormwater they're capturing to improve the environment. Oh, I love your bag, Danny. Nice. Is there a website for that, Jennifer? It's on the Parks Department's website. It's probably right up, um, or if you just Google NYC Parks Tree Map, there have been a lot of recent press articles about it. But it's fun. You can zoom in right onto your block, or now we've added. 150,000 in park trees. And of course we have a lot uptown where one quarter parkland up here. So we have a lot of park trees that are included on that. Um, so trees not only clean the air, but they reduce public health costs and they improve the environment and um, our waterways by removing, uh, or by absorbing stormwater. Liz mentioned the Fort Washington bike path is reopened between um, 181st and Dykeman. I uh, just want to clarify the construction is not complete um, because of dropping temperatures and some uh, supply chain issues. The contractor has um, temporarily halted work. Um, so you'll see some things that look undone. That's because construction is going to resume in the spring. 
and the contract contractor, of course, will make all efforts to preserve um, access to the Greenway during peak commuting times. Um, Lily Brown, thank you to the council member um, for over $3 million going into this Fort Washington playground. Um, his office and parks uh, will be sent, circulating a flyer um, and we'll also send it to the community board. Um, it'll also be posted on the parks department's website. Um, but that's a wonderful amenity um, for for the southwest corner of, uh, or near the southwest corner of community board 12. Um, and we're so delighted that he's funded it. Um, and uh, community advocacy has also resulted in um, the sidewalks on Upper Riverside Drive getting redone there. Um, I think it was announced last month that recreation center hours have expanded in neighborhoods hardest hit by COVID. So Highbridge Rec Center is now open longer hours, Monday to Friday, 6 to 10, Saturday, 8 to 8, and Sunday, 8 to 6. Um, and um, that includes the um, the uh, late night basketball um, program. Um, I know some people on this committee um, probably have been reading about the pickleball issue. Not enough places to do pickleball. You can do pickleball at Highbridge Recreation Center um, from January 3rd to March 24th, Mondays through Fridays, noon to 2, Wednesdays 12 to 2 and 6 to 8, and Sundays 1230 to 2. If you're a beginner, um, beginner pickle pickleball is Tuesdays 6 to 8. Um, so you can continue playing pickleball even in, in the winter months. Um, we mentioned Sally Fisher's funeral on the 21st at 11 a.m. at Cathedral of St. John the Divine. Capital project updates. Um, the Bennett Avenue rock face is complete. So those 40 parking spaces have been returned um, for the public's use. Um, the Greenway update is already mentioned, and um, tonight we're covering 186th Street. Um, pathway work in Fort Tryon Park is wrapping up, but is uh, is still underway. Most of the paths have been reopened, uh, with a few exceptions. Um, but I expect that uh, project to be complete at the end of this month. Was that short enough? Yes, that was great. So I, I wanted to just say a brief word about the pathway work. Sure. So super grateful for it. And I am quite sure I am not the only person who just smiles as I walk on these lovely paths that are no longer a tripping hazard. I mean, it's just great. Uh, my one uh, sort of concern, question, suggestion uh, for, you know, doing things a little bit better next time is for the, and, and I know that the, the exact timing on when something gets closed down um, is always a little bit uh, imprecise, a little bit fluid because how quickly one section gets done and another section starts, it's weather dependent. There are many, many factors. But it would be really helpful if whoever is the contractor and the construction supervisor for that contractor had a really clear sense of what it is they're constructing so that they have a good sense of when they're going to be starting the next section, where's a good place to put signage about whatever's going to be closed. Because it was just, it was a little chaotic and it was needlessly chaotic. Um, and I don't want to throw shade at parks. A lot of that is sort of outside of your control. It's what the contractor is doing. Um, you would think that anybody who's doing this work would kind of think it through a little bit better, um, but it's, I don't know what the protocol is, but it's maybe not a bad idea. I don't know, maybe you're already doing this and, and the contractor ignored this request, but it, it, it seems useful to me to talk to whoever is responsible for the construction management of that work so that they 
are really thoughtful about how they implement each segment and how they uh, install signage for each segment so that people aren't walking through the park and all of a sudden they find themselves kind of stuck in a weird place and having to double back. Because I know there was just like a lot of that and it was just needlessly chaotic. Agreed. I think the challenge here was it was just a few weeks versus a standard construction project, which is a year. So it was very rapid fire. Mm -hmm. um, the, the resident engineer did respond to our request and we put signs up letting people know right from the start, right, right at the entrance, key entrances, what areas would be closed after that first week or two that we got the uh, complaints. Oh. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, okay, I'm vamping for time a little bit because I'm waiting for uh, the folks at the barber shop to dial in. Apparently they're having some uh, some difficulty dialing in. Um, so while we're waiting for them, uh, Domingo, what you got? Um, I just wanted to ask Jennifer uh, if there's any uh, plans on uh, making sure that like after post COVID, uh, the courts are, I know they put these like black tar over some basketball courts. And there was also an initiative where some of the courts were being painted. I was just wondering if that was going to happen this year, being that there's so many courts on like there's construction happening and stuff like that. Do you mean the like what we did with you up at just north of Busick Ballfield? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, um, the thing is that it seems like every every year it's getting worse. So the cracks are getting big, bigger. So, for instance, I could send you some pictures of how, how Raul Wallenberg is looking, like where the court is actually like cracking you know and so i think uh as somebody who uses that uh for summer programming it's like it's it's a liability to have something where people could actually trip not necessarily off the court but off the cracks on the court yes i think we i don't know if you remember domingo we went through this at wallenberg the cracks are beyond sort of quick and easy repairs and really require like a full depth um, asphalt redo, like a reconstruction. Oh, I know, I know, I know. But sometimes, yeah. like, similar to what happened uh, in the one next to, uh, in Fort George, the one next to Michael Music, uh, yeah. so, put, sometimes putting some some concrete, like, they would, like, temporary fixes, because unfortunately, I understand the project is a bit more. Yeah. Uh, but but sometimes, like, even that is a, is a quick fix that could prevent anybody from, like, tripping over those cracks and stuff like that. Yeah, I think with, with the huge shifts in weather that we've been having too, the, you know, when we have ice, the freeze thaw is. Yeah, yeah exactly. Pretty, yeah. But we can revisit Wallenberg to see what, what can be done there. All right, thank you. Sure. Thanks. Um, okay, I'm just wondering uh, if the councilwoman is on, if we've got any update, or Jamila, if we've got any update as to what's happening with the um, with the barbershop, if they're if they're able to log on to the Zoom, because we are yes. Hi everyone, we're um, in the process of figuring it out. It's just okay. something with the um, technology. Okay, because uh, we are ready for that portion of the agenda, but I don't really want to start that um, because then you know we'd have to repeat it for the benefit of uh, the folks who are there. So, all right. Uh, I'm gonna cut my audio and my video. Uh, we're gonna take a brief pause on the agenda because We've only got these two items and I don't wanna start on the goal setting, um, knowing that it's just a few minutes before we get to the rest of it. I guess while we're waiting for folks to dial in, does anybody have any other um burning questions on parks matters for jennifer we usually have a little bit more of a q a 
uh, with her. And we haven't done that in the last two meetings because we've um, spent a lot of time with, uh, with other agenda items. So Danny. A uh, quick and odd question. I have a, a basketball chain net. Uh, I was thinking, who can I give that to so then they could replace the one in the in the end loft? Uh, there's like, a, like the one that's up there already is just like ripped and torn apart. So I thought it would be cool to donate um, a metal net for that basketball court. I think it's still within the contractor's warranty period. So if the net is not up to standard the contractor has to replace it but you and i can talk offline danny um and i'll see if we if there isn't some way to work around that okay yeah um i don't know i'll, put, like, my, uh, I'll put my email or oh, i can't put my email in the chat i'll get it from liz or something like that i'm okay. pretty sure i have it somewhere here oh yeah you sent the sally photos i can i can yeah shoot you an email okay cool no problem thank you thank you so much yeah, no problem. Okay. Thank you for that. I, I I really like that part though. Every once in a while I go out over to shoot some hoops. So uh, they did an amazing job uh, at that park. Oh, at, at, at Javits? Yeah. And Loftus? Oh. And, and Loftus. Oh, and Loftus, yes. I love that park. Yeah, yeah. I, I live across the street from it. So it's it's uh, really delightful to see that. And I can't wait for summer uh, for when the, um, the sprinklers are, come. Are the bar stars coming back, Jennifer, or no? If, if they want to, sure. Not a sprinkler, a fountain. Yes. Thank you for that, indeed. All right. Hey, Liz, is there another item on the agenda? Or this is the only item on the agenda. There is one other item on the agenda. Um, so, are you able to get uh, get attached? Because we're up we're up to your your part. Can we move to the other item on the agenda and then come back to the thing? Sure. Okay. So I wanted to actually. Never mind. Yeah, we can yeah, start, yeah. but all right. Yeah, well, see okay. Laura, yeah. Laura yeah. loaded. Okay. Should we have Laura load her presentation? Yep. All right, we can start. Yep. Okay. So, all right. So I'm going to ask for everybody except the people who are talking to uh, mute themselves and. Um, I just want to I want to give a brief intro and I want to make sure that so the folks in the barbershop I I can't see you but can you see this shared screen? We can see it Liz, we can see it. Okay, great, 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 great. All right. So, um you know I I'm hoping that most of the people who were who are here this evening were here uh last month and the month before so I don't have to repeat too much. But just for uh, full context, you know, there was a public scoping meeting uh, on this in uh, June. Uh, the the um, the capital design team came and made a presentation in November. Uh, it's a beautiful design that really reflects the active use of the space with basketball, and also reflects the uh, community's stated desire to have some seating space and some space uh, for recreation for smaller children who are not gonna be shooting at adult size hoops, um, seating space for caregivers who might be supervising children and space for other kinds of programming, uh, whether it's you know, a farmer's market or you know, some kinds of, of um, community gathering and gross motor movement other than basketball. Um, there were a number of issues with that design and a number of questions, uh, primarily around the, uh, the fence height. Um, at the December meeting, 
uh, the Parks Department came back with slightly higher fencing um, in, in for some of the uh, for some of the fencing, um, but still with the, uh, and with a five foot fence at the uh, sidewalk instead of uh, a seven foot fence, which would be the maximum height that the Parks Department would do. Uh, but there was also a lot of public input around the apportionment of basketball court space versus seating space. And there was a lot of feedback around uh, whether uh, how much seating space there should be, how much landscaping there should be, how much non-basketball there should be. Uh, there was not uh, agreement around exactly what there should what it should look like, but there was pretty broad consensus that there was too much seating. Uh, so we asked for the Parks Department to come back with uh, modifications to those, to those two things, a little bit less seating um, and the higher seven foot. I do want to say that it is remarkable and to my knowledge, unprecedented for uh, parks to keep coming back um, with design modifications. And I love this dialogue and I appreciate this dialogue and um, I am grateful for this, but I would very much like for this having been the third presentation of this plan for us to be able to come to some kind of agreement so that we can go forward uh, with the renovation of this space. Because what we have right now is just, it's, it's no good for anybody. Nobody likes what we have right now. We want it to be fixed. Um, so what you got? Uh, thanks for that recap, Liz. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, okay, great. So I'm Laura Drawbaugh. I'm the landscape architect for 186th Street Basketball Court, and I'm happy to see you again. And uh, thank you again for your input in the last two meetings. Uh, most of you saw the design presented in December when we, <clears throat> we did receive clear direction at that meeting uh, to focus on the basketball users and that we did not need amenities for very young children. Um, we heard that you wanted a larger basketball court, reduced seating, and a higher fence on the sidewalk. Uh, but we also realized there were requests for shade and seating for seniors and activity for preteen girls and boys. So tonight we'll show a quick recap of the design plan and fence diagram that we showed last time. And we're gonna show you the revised design based on your input. So your park, as you know, is located north of the Washington Bridge on West 186th Street between Audubon and St. Nicholas. And the basketball court was created here after a building <clears throat> burned down in the 1970s. Uh, existing conditions are really simple. Uh, asphalt with non-regulation basketball markings for sports lights for basketball backstops, chain link fences, some on retaining walls, a drinking fountain and lighting that does not work and no green space. Uh, the site's in super poor condition with settling due to unstable foundation material, broken amenities and no drainage structures. Uh, interestingly, the site, which is at a very high elevation, has very strong shadows cast by the buildings on three sides. Uh, the south side is a parking lot, making the space act as a sundial. So this was the plan we showed in December uh, <clears throat> with uh, security lighting, no sports lighting, a regulation size basketball court, a shady seating area, 10 benches, and a four foot high fence on the sidewalk. The graphics are based on the uh, shade patterns on the park. And of course, reconstruction also includes upgrading, retaining walls, chain link fencing, paving, and drainage. Uh, this was the fence diagram from that design showing the four, uh, four foot high uh, perimeter fence, which is what Parks is doing these days in general. And, uh, and we did hear the concerns about security and runaway basketballs from the bucket ball feature. So um, we uh, clearly heard uh, what so many of the basketball users said 
Uh, there are concerns about unwanted drug activity on the benches. So the desire for fewer benches, <clears throat> reduced number of trees for shade and uh, expanded basketball. So this diagram shows a comparison between the December size of the basketball court on the top and the expanded basketball court that we're showing today. So looking in a little more detail at the uh, expanded basketball court, uh, we've reduced the seating from 10 benches to three, and we're only adding three new trees for cool shade. And we moved the uh, bucket ball for younger basketball users to inside the seating area. So looking at the fence diagram for this expanded basketball court uh, design, uh, we, we raised the sidewalk fence from four foot to five foot six steel fence with pickets. And we do feel this is sufficient to deter climbing. And we felt that a seven foot fence would give a cage-like appearance and experience to being in the seating area. And um, if you look up here, uh, the center top picture, you can see this park in the Bronx that has the five foot six uh, picket fencing. Here's a view of a rendering showing uh, inside the basketball court showing the 12, 12 foot chain link fence and the 10 foot chain link gate. And then we have a view of the seating area with the three benches. And we've also got the drinking fountain and bottle filler and the bucket hoop for free teens here. Uh, a, <clears throat> a view from the sidewalk with the uh, higher five foot six fencing and pickets. And uh, one last uh, look at uh, the plan of the lengthened basketball court for your questions. Thank you. Love that, thank you. Um, so as I did before, uh, I would like to go through the public first and then um, uh, questions from the committee. I, I do, can you just clarify what you said about the, the five foot, six inch fence with pickets? Are the pickets additional to the five foot, six inches or included in the five foot, six inches? They're included. Um, however, um, I, you know, sometimes the curb height that they're resting on does vary a bit, like this Bronx picture. Uh, looks like we've got like almost a five inch curb. So, but, but the fence itself from the top of the picket to the curb is five foot six. Okay. Um, so I'm actually going to go first to uh, who's, I'm not sure whose phone it is that we've got the, um, well, I'm gonna defer to the councilwoman first. Councilwoman gets to go first. <laughs> Thanks, Liz. I just really wanted to take the opportunity to thank Community Board 12. First, congratulate your new chair, Kathy, and um, incoming chair in, in this new position and all of welcoming back Domingo to the committee and, and all of the, the members wishing you all a happy new year. And then I want to just take an opportunity to thank Liz as the chair of this committee, as well as Jennifer Hoppe and the team at Parks. Um, for, as Liz mentioned, what is an unprecedented process, but I think is the perfect process because it really does center the people who uh, live, play, and work in this community. I, I want to also take the opportunity to thank Freddie and the owners of the barbershop for opening up their space and allowing for the community to have the opportunity to really give significant um, you know, input and involvement in this project. And I look forward to the final uh, rendition and eventually uh, breaking ground here. So I just wanted to thank everyone for the participation. Thank it looks good. Thank you. Thank you for that. And and yes, I was remiss in not um, thanking Freddie again. I just, I don't know a whole lot of other community boards that get to have like a satellite uh, location in a local business. And it's just awesome. So thank you for that. 
Um, and, and welcome, Kathy. Um, I appreciate your coming in. I didn't, I didn't see your name in the, in the participants. It's very exciting. I don't usually have the chair of the board dropping in on my meetings, so thank you for that. Uh, so Jamila, um, we got some folks in, in, in the barbershop who have feedback on, on this design. Thumbs up, thumbs down, thoughts. What you got? Thank you, Kiana. No problem. Okay, you said your name, pregunta, concern. I know I have one. Liz, I have a question. No, sorry, I have a question. The circles that are green, are those trees by where the benches are? Yeah, the, the, so that's going to be the shade that's cast around the from the trees that are that are there or that are being planted so are they going to cover the mural uh you can see this view let's see uh we'll uh no i would say the foliage just won't be that dense uh you can get an idea of what it might look like here will the tree be able to be moved more to like the northern side The, uh, yeah. Oh, we do have a drain, a big drainage structure that has to sit uh, right up here. Uh, it's, it's it's quite a large structure. So can we leave that area without a tree? Um, let's this, see. This tree will lose its leaves in the yeah autumn and winter, and they yeah. They Six months a year, it won't have leaves. The trunks will be here and here. So actually there won't be, um, so while you're, you'll be looking under the foliage to see the, um, the mural. We can prune the, I mean, we could Is make sure we prune them up, you know. But Laura, it takes several years for them to get like this anyway. Absolutely. This is probably like a like a 20, 30 year old tree. They come in pretty small. Yeah. But is there any way that we could get rid of that one tree? Because at the end of the day, it is a memorial. We don't want to block it. How about I think the tree bushes? could I think the tree could be bushes? shaped, could be shaped to show the um you're particularly interested in the face showing on the mural, is that right? The home mural, actually. Oh, okay. Um, I think we can shape the trees to let that show. The thing is, trees will, the way trees breathe, they don't just provide shade, they make the air cool. And so there are a lot of great benefits to the trees. And I think we could shape them so that you could see the mural. We, we have done, uh, White Park has uh, murals uh, with trees. Um, I just don't think I just don't think that one tree will make as much of a difference if you know what I'm saying. And at the end of the day, it is a memorial of somebody that we lost in our community, and that's something that we would like to keep. That is a memory of somebody that we have lost. I understand. Okay, well, I understand your thought. Okay. Okay. Anybody? So is that that tree that that uh, in the graphic that's blocking the the mural? That's a proposed tree or an existing tree? It's proposed. Okay. So yeah, if it's possible to either relocate that tree or to have um, lower plantings, I mean, because well, they have small bushes, right? Well, I mean, small bushes are also going to grow. If you look at the height of the uh, the lowest part of the mural, even bushes with growth are going to block out the, the lower part. I mean, I do. Could they put the picture back, Liz? What do you mean put the picture back? Uh, of the uh, proposed tree area? Oh, yeah. Can you flip the slide back that shows the tree map? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the rendering I did is not, you know, it's schematic. It might 
give the false impression that it, more of the mural is covered than it actually would be. Yeah, you think about Javits and there there were trees and previously and you could still see the wall behind it. That's true. Yeah, I may have put the mural, I might not have sized it, I mean, exactly like truly as high as it is or as broad as it is. So um, I'm not that good. <laughs> I wouldn't take my oh. rendering super literally. <laughs> okay, so I mean, I, I just, I, to the public's point, it's very important that whatever trees yeah. are planted, uh, that they're not blocking the mural. So if the reason that that tree looks like it's blocking the mural is because it's a bad rendering, that and don't, I don't take it personally, um, then that tree placement is fine. If the reason that that tree looks like it's blocking the mural is because for a significant portion of the year when it's has foliage, it would actually be blocking the mural, then it's not fine and it shouldn't be planted there. Um, so, you know, I, I, I'm getting the sense that you're hearing the concern and that you will uh, proceed accordingly. Does that, uh, does that address your concern? Yeah. Okay. And thank you for raising that. Uh, are there other questions, concerns? The question will be the same size as is now? No. Smaller? Yeah. I'm sorry, what was your question? It was going to be the same length as is now, the size. It was big, like, like the same size, big. The basketball court? It's going to be shorter. Like it, looks, it looks like it. Yeah, it is going to be shorter. Yeah. No, but remember, do you guys have a picture of what we proposed before compared to now? Yeah, if uh, Laura, if you could go back uh, and show the, what was proposed oh. last month. This. That, that's what we showed in December. Right. And, uh, oh, and here's the comparison. Let's see. I, uh, here is, where's the comp here? Yeah, that one. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I actually, I, I want to just go back to something that I think is really important to keep in mind. Um, at the, mm -hmm. at the June meeting mm -hmm. and also yeah, at, the, at the original public scoping meeting, um, when we first had folks, you know, dialing in from the barbershop, and at the November meeting, um, when we had a pretty significant attendance, there were probably 60 people attending the meeting, although we didn't have folks dialing in from the barbershop for that meeting. There, were, there was a lot of public feedback that was asking for seating of some kind and some other uh, recreational area for smaller children. So there's the size of the, of the site is the size of the site and it cannot be made bigger. So if there's anything that's gonna be added like seating or recreation space for small children, then that means that that's going to come out of the basketball, the rest of the site, because the, the site can't be made any bigger. So it was very clear that in the initial design, too much space was taken out. But I don't think that the space is going to be renovated to have exactly the same just basketball as there is there now, because there are a lot of people who seem to want to have some kind of seating. I have um, a, oh, no. Um, I don't mean this to disrespect anybody in any way, but I do recall last time we had a meeting, I did speak about how this is a safe space for our younger men. 
And mm -hmm. those are the people that we need to be prioritizing. At the end of the day, we do have a park that does have a very large playground for children underneath the age of 11. And it's not that many blocks away. It's about three blocks away. So I think the rec recreational space for children, I feel it's out of place here. Okay. So, uh, so we put in the um, the bucket ball for preteens. It's it's not for little kids. Preteens pre can use the basketball, yeah, court. the basketball court. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, duly noted. Um, before I go through to the committee members, are there other folks in uh, the barbershop who have uh, feedback, comments, questions? Just a quick question. I, the colors here, is the, are those going to be the same colors that are going to be in the renovation and the physical plan? Um, they, I actually looked a lot at the murals for color, and uh, we do have a limited palette based on what the manufacturers make. But yeah, these are pretty uh, pretty close to the, uh, that is the colors that we're looking at. Because, <clears throat> and I did look at the murals for inspiration on the colors, yeah. Uh, what is the orange circle? The orange circle. I mean, it's way bigger than before. The iron circles, are those a part of the design or is that like an actual physical thing? Yeah, it's part of it's it's part of the design to make it unique. Okay. So and also could be used uh you know for any kind of like game type activity. So we wanted to have a couple the idea of several different kinds of activities could happen in the same space. Okay. So hey. keeping the children it's kind of a game thing, yeah. But it's just surface treatment. It's not um, just in the in the, the surface, the paint job. Yeah. Okay. As somebody who was a preteen, I was not playing on my thing. I was playing okay. as a preteen. Okay. Okay. Any concerns? Okay. Okay. Thank you. No, 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 no. Got you. Okay. Um, I wanna, so earlier, uh, Rosa Yolanda Pineda from Conectémonos had. Um, Give me one second, Liz. Okay. 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 So uh, earlier, uh, Rosie Alanda Pineda from Conectémonos had um, thrown something up in the chat. So from which I assume she's got like a question or some feedback on this uh, proposal. Hi, Liz. Thank you. Um, I am. I am very pleased with. I am very pleased and excited about when the community comes together and it works with elected officials and, and, and has input from the community, how we all as people gain. It has been long coming since the 90s who are the young people and credit to the young people who were preteens in that block where we clean the lot and we work in, in keeping that for the community. So here we are, I don't know how many decades later, and, and this dream is becoming a reality. So I am, I am really excited about this. Um, uh, very thankful of the community board 12, when we met and this project was recommended to the council, uh, Councilman Rodriguez, who allocated the funds. Very proud of the work that uh, De La Rosa's office is doing in continuing that work of, of, of having our voices heard. Uh, 
uh, Liz and, and Jennifer, uh, you, you have been real troopers in, in pushing this, this project forward and, and to the parks department and, 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 and putting all the efforts and our suggestion, taking all of our suggestion into consideration. That is really, that is really appreciated. Uh, so Conectémonos is, is really proud in the role that we have played in making this cancha, our cancha, a reality. Uh, wishing you a great 2023 and looking forward to bringing the type of programs that we want into this community space. Thank you very much. Cool. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Okay, uh, looking in the, oh wait, we've got attendees. Oh, now I see. Uh, Rosa, you, you, just, you just put your hand up. Did you have something else you wanted to add? No, or? no, I'm playing with my telephone. I am done, thank you. Liz. Got it, okay. Bye. So I'm gonna lower your hand. Okay. Um, and then I'm gonna go through the panelists. Uh, first, I see uh, Luana. Hi, hi everybody. Saludos, mi gente en la barbería. Um, I think that before we uh, uh, take a vote and after all of the questions have been flushed out, I think it would be beneficial to go over the change in dimensions because if I'm not mistaken, the barbershop is probably seeing this in a very tiny computer. It seems that way, but in order for us to address the concerns, Perhaps go over. They're watching uh, on the television, Luana. Ah, perfecto, maravilloso. So, so I'm seeing here that there's a significant difference in the expansion of the basketball court of about 15 feet. Is that correct? It's actually mm -hmm. exactly 15 feet. Exactamente. In a reduction from 10 seats to three, because, you know, I think that Maybe the players want to sit down and take a sip of water. Porque no somos camello, ¿verdad? We're not camels, right? So I think that might be beneficial. So is that correct? A reduction from 10 to three seats, yes? Yes. Perfecto. Thank you so much for that. And then maybe the question of the tree is a question for a landscape architect that can perhaps advise a, a tree that grows tall enough that would not block the mural whatsoever, but will still provide cooling for the concrete. Would that be fair? Okay. Laura, Laura, Laura is a landscape architect. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I stand corrected then. But I, I, I think that's corrected. a... I'm that's not a, really a botanist. I'm not a botanist, but maybe that is something because I also want to make sure that you know, the, 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 the community that is so invested in this project is also heard and the details are not spared. And we treat this with the respect uh, th that, that it well deserves. So th for my own understanding as well, I just want it also to clarify so that it is favorable. It, it looks great and we thank you for going back and, and working on it. I think that's an excellent point because there's trees with really big leaves that are close together and then there's um, uh, other trees with little tiny leaves that are really good at letting the sun come through and they also lose their foliage uh, very early and mm -hmm. so um, we I, I agree I think we could definitely use trees that have very small light letting in uh, leaves for the for this site it's a that's a great idea but the main concern is that it does not block the mm -hmm. mural because it is a memorial and you know i you know sitting on the on the public safety committee memor we take memorials very seriously especially given the current state of affairs in our neighborhood so mm. i i you know i just want to make sure that 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 is heard and 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 listened to I think and that's I know, pretty yeah. well. I think that's been really, really well asked and answered, and I am I am grateful for that really important feedback. And I and I'm I'm looking at the body language and from our Parks Capital team, and I think they get that. Yes. Thank we, you. 
We definitely do get it. And I know you've heard enough, Liz, on it, but I, do, I just want to point one other thing out. I'm Leslie Peoples. I'm the design director. Um, landscape, I'm a landscape architect from Parks. Laura, if you could switch to number three, slide number three, which shows you the existing trees that are out on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, can, you can see that those are, they look to be honey locust, which has a yes. very strong leaf. And you can see the one on the left is limbed up. So if you could imagine either of those trees in front of the mural, um, the, it will not block the mural. The branching would be above it. So we'll look at putting in a tree of that type. Um, so to that point, before I get to the rest of the uh, folks on the committee. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you, Laura, for, uh, Leslie, for that. Um, to that point about the kind of tree and the small leafing, if it's a kind of tree like what we're looking at that's actually there, does that work for you all? Thumbs up, thumbs down? Fantastic. Okay. Um, and I just- Fantastic. Fair compromise. <laughs> thank you. And, and at the risk of hogging the mic, I just want to thank- um, former parks commissioner for teaching me what little I know about trees. I had actually written down in the margin, locust, not London plain, which are, so I guess I learned something about small leaves and trees. Um, thank you very much for that. Uh, Domingo. Uh, yeah, so my recommendation, uh, could we go back to the slide where we have the, the actual new project, please? The blueprint. Um, so my recommendation, or, or you could go to the previous one where it compares it. Uh, so I would recommend uh, removing the the bucket thing for for the the little one. Um, I recommend moving the court, uh, stretching the court three more feet, uh, removing one bench and mm -hmm. one tree. So similar to the way the playground currently is, where the basketball court doesn't allow for uh, the mural to be obstructed um actually both murals uh making it i feel like a fair compromise because i know that we're going to be growing stuff but if you understand the, the 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 positioning of the mural anything that would be planted there would obstruct it technically because it's so low uh so um uh because i see some little green uh stuff that i'm assuming they're gonna there's, there's some uh pots that, that are gonna be grown there some grassy stuff right so i recommend removing the bucket extending the court at least three to four feet um keeping two benches and two trees uh and that doesn't necessarily impact the design as much that's just uh, my opinion. i i i hear you um the the new chain link fence that comes across is actually going to come right in the middle it could end up i think actually already at this stretchy stretched out it's actually going to come through the mural because i believe the mural extends all the way to this building wall so bringing the 12 foot chain link fence uh closer to the street will actually uh potentially uh go right into the mural so... no but i mean like it, uh, you wouldn't need a fence i'm assuming if if you're removing the buckets the the little hoops that you're putting there oh no we need the 12 foot chain let me get the fence diagram here we need the um 12 foot chain link fence for the basketball hoop oh okay okay, okay. yeah so you can see like the mural can you see my cursor here so i think yeah, the yeah, mural. yeah so this is the building wall so i think the mural actually goes from here all the way to this, uh, you know, the end of the building here. So we've got the chain link, the 12 foot chain link fence coming in. It's potentially covering part okay, of the mural, I get, even, I, even I, at I this length. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because so my concern is as somebody lives who does programming in parks, like, yes, I understand uh, the trees, et cetera, but sometimes parks doesn't actually have the resources to keep maintenance up. So it becomes very, uh, uh, like sometimes the trees might, uh, like for instance, in Wallenberg, the trees be dropping some little balls that uh, mess up the the courts. You know what I'm saying? So it all depends on the type of tree, right? But also like uh, when these trees are, when the seasons are changing and, and the leaves are falling, all of that is coming onto. So it's an additional 
um, upkeep for parks. And parks, I, I personally think, uh, lack the resources to be able to fully engage every every court and 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 do the trimming, et cetera. You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. and Jennifer could check me on that, uh, but that's just how it's been for the last nine years for us. It's 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 pretty tough to really upkeep with the trimming of the trees, et cetera. So, to Domingo's point, I'm just I'm looking, and I understand that a schematic is a little bit different from reality. Um, But to Domingo's points, which are extremely well taken, um, I'm looking at the the circle cast by that tree, and it looks like it's going, the tree itself is far enough away from the 12-foot fence that whatever it is it's dropping from its canopy is going to be dropped on the plantings below and on the um the the bench below but not on the basketball court itself in part because it's north of the basketball court enough and in part because there is the chain link fence so oh no Liz that was based on the logic of what I proposed of increasing the footage and and why I was encouraging to remove one one tree that's what that was the logic behind that, not necessarily. Right, right. I, and I hear that, but if you move the fence back, if you increase, if you add three to four feet um, to the newly proposed- eight, It impacts the mural, I get it, I get it. It's gonna, so are you still recommending to add that three to four feet or no? Uh, I retract, uh, oh, but okay. I, I, I you would do say- do still wanna ditch the tree and the fence? Uh, uh, no. What I would say is what would be dope uh, and something to consider with parks is, and this could be like a stewardship opportunity with, with the community, is actually making the memorial place a, sp- a, a, a space where you can actually honor individuals and, and figuring how that would seem. But I don't want to throw the plan too far off, but I still do remove, I still do feel strongly about removing the bucket hoops uh, with the seal coat. Okay, so to be clear, your recommendation is remove the bucket hoops and that's it? Or remove the bucket? Yeah, yeah, because unfortunately the fencing okay. wouldn't allow. Gotcha. So I, I retract the, the adding extra footage, but um, I do still feel strongly about uh, removing the bucket hoop with the uh, coat seal. Got it. Uh, and potentially, um, uh, it was addressed earlier with regards to uh, the, the, the left side of the left tree. Uh, which wouldn't take that much space, but I still think in one way or another, it is going to obstruct the mural um, just because of the different seasons and how uh, uh, trees transform through the various seasons. Uh, just something uh, to think about and the pollen, uh, the pollen in the spring, et cetera, you know, so just something to think about. Okay. Um, Jennifer, you had Hey, uh, so I have, um, I think so far the, the project that they rendered out looks pretty cool. Um, I also uh, have two suggestions. Uh, one of them is it would be taking out that junior hoop. Um, instead of putting a junior hoop, they could put games on the floor like a Scully or Hopscotch or something like that. Something um, like I don't think preteens are actually going like to play hoop and things like that like um I, I i i it looks funny you know um and then the next thing would be is uh, piggybacking off a lot of what domingo said and just uh i would just eliminate that whole her tree um and just not even putting a tree there not even putting any landscape there uh and i have i have a lot of reasons why uh one putting a tree there just takes away validity from the mural itself. As an artist, if I have a mural and I have uh, any obstruction in front of it, it takes validity from, from the actual mural itself. So so like, let's say like sometime in the future, if someone goes there to actually fix up the mural, it's not gonna be that easy to fix it up while there's a tree in the middle of the way, you know? And uh, trees, they do grow, so after a while, like. Sometimes branches they'll go over the 12 foot fence and fall in, inside of the the basketball hoop. Like 
I lived in uh, places where there's a uh, basketball uh, basketball fences like or basketball courts like near parks, and that's like one of the things that's like super annoying, like having to have like those branches on the floor, like having to clean that up every season. Uh, that also doesn't have like an expense for the park, you know, like having for them to come over over the, to that park, prune it, clean it, take out all the leaves and stuff. Um, that's my two cents for for this whole thing, but. So far, so good. Like you guys actually have been listening to what you know what the community is asking for. Uh, we did have hopscotch uh, here, and we were told that take little kid stuff out. <laughs> so yeah. Well, Scully, <laughs> Scully's not Scully's not hopscotch. Like uh, Scully's a game that's like played out over yeah. here. So. I, Okay. A lot of a lot of people in this neighborhood would know like what Scully is, but okay. you know, um, yeah, hopscotch is a kids' game. Scully is like kind of like a little bit different, you know. Okay. Okay. Thank you, uh, Jamila. We got we got additional questions from the uh, uh, Kiana. I guess it's Kiana. Um, where did we go, Kiana? Um, I will ask to ask you guys if they're the basketball rim, are they single rim? They that look like this. Yeah, I don't know. Huh? You don't want to go? No. Okay. They're saying they want a typical room. I think that means, but okay. The other question that I was supposed to ask. Wait, wait, wait. I just want to have clarity. So you're okay with, with what's being proposed, or you want something different than what's being proposed? The current basketball room? You said that's a double room, right? Yeah. So supposedly that's a double room. They want a single room. That's about it. That's not about it. And then I have a question. Absolutely, right? The okay, wait, before before we get to the second question, can I just I'm sorry, I, I don't play basketball. They made fun of me when I was a kid, so I don't play basketball. And I just want to be really clear. Mm -hmm. um, as to whether the rim that's being proposed in this design is a single rim or a double rim, and if that's what people who do play basketball want. It's more stronger, so it's going to bounce around more. So. But double rim is not the last stronger. That's not all. Liz, can I answer? Um, this is our this is our standard um, rim that we put on the basketball hoops. So we will talk to our specs and estimating department to see if we can do the double rim. So if you could just put that in the resolution, we will look into that. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So I just I'm just making myself a note. So what what folks want? So just to be clear, what Parks usually uses is a single rim, and what folks want is a double rim. No, 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 no. no. It is currently what they're saying is that the one that's proposed right now is a double rim. What they want is a single rim. Oh. Okay. The double rim, it causes the ball to come back out when you shoot it. So it interferes in the game and people consider it. Oh. Okay, got it. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thanks for clarifying. Okay. So do you still need something in the resolution about that? No. Okay. So you would so you would like you would like a single rim, not a double rim. All right. Yeah. All right, correct. 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 And what is it that's being shown in that picture? What does Parks usually use? Double rim, because it's stronger and can withstand high levels of use. I see. 
So a double rim is stronger, but a single rim provides better play. Yes. yes. All right. Got it. I love you. You teach me things every day. So actually, Liz, do put that in the resolution then. Uh, yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. The other now, thing what's your next question? The other thing is, Liz, in the, in the course, trash? Yeah. There's a there's a trash receptacle, a, a big belly trash receptacle that has a solar panel mm -hmm, right here so that it compacts the garbage. So it has a higher capacity to accept more garbage. Um, they're great. OK, and then the light, are those like the dimming lights or? Or are those lights only the light that I see here, are those going to only be in the front of the park? Yes, we, we call those park security lights, and there's there's two of them in the front of the park. Huh? Are you guys keeping the light that's currently there, or are you guys removing those? We don't have the funding to to uh, put in sports lighting at the. Um, but I remember when we had a meeting, we asked for a vote for it because I know that the council member said that she's willing to subsidize that. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Well, we had a meeting. We asked for the quote, like what would be the cost for those lights? Because mm -hmm. the council member did say that she was willing to put funding toward the light. Uh, yeah, that you would have to talk to the council person about that. We, we, we are concerned about uh, noise and the light disturbing uh, the people that live nearby. Hi, I'm sorry. My name, I work for the council member. I'm a oh, okay. That's why I'm bringing it up. Okay. There's no noise. Okay, we'll have a separate meeting. Okay. Yeah, because we currently don't have the funding to restore the sports lighting. It's it's kind of a big deal. Yeah, it's very it's expensive. Yeah. What is the cost? Uh, and we were specific too. We like mentioned the dimming light in order so that it won't bother the neighbors after a certain time. Oh, on a timer, right? The sports lights on a timer. Yes, if we did sports lighting, they would be on a timer. Mm -hmm. Right, but what would that cost? So if I'm understanding uh, Kiana's question uh, on behalf of the members of the public and speaking in her capacity as someone who works for the councilwoman's office, uh, folks would like sports lighting restored to the play area and have it be on a dimmer so as not to bother the people who live in the adjacent buildings. So the question is, what would the cost of that be? Leslie, do you want to uh, remember? Do you remember? I, I don't remember off the top of my head. Yeah. I believe I believe we had sent that to our borough office. I'm not sure if if they've had a conversation with the council member. Mm -hmm. So, well, I'm guessing by virtue of the fact that the council member's staff is asking the question, I'm going to go with no. No. So, so Steve, Steve may not have. Oh, we did have a conversation. We had a meeting. Uh -huh. Okay. Over about it. So I think we didn't get a lot of feedback one way or the other. And since we don't have funding, we moved forward with the funding to afford it. We did move forward with what we had the funding for. Okay. Um, we, I'm fine taking this conversation offline, but I do want to be clear that we did ask for a cost estimate so that we can be able to put this into the funding process for the fiscal year 24. Oh, for next year. Okay. Okay. I I hmm. will make sure that Steve gets you that number. I don't have it at the in my email right now. I can't get to it. So I will make sure Steve Simon has that in the morning and we can set up a meeting to discuss that with you. Parks is Parks is still concerned um, with the lights being on um later in the evening if it's going to disturb the people in the in the buildings next door um, so we can talk about that offline
Okay, I, I would, uh, talking about it offline is great, but I do want to address it a little bit uh, in, in public to just say, to sort of echo back what I'm hearing both from Parks and from folks at the barbershop and from the councilwoman's office. Um, if I'm understanding this issue correctly, there is a desire for lighting. There is a desire to make sure that the lighting doesn't disturb people who are in their apartments and not playing basketball. And that these two things are achievable with a timer and with funding to repair the lighting. So Parks is going to get back to the councilwoman's office with regard to what that cost would be. The councilwoman is going to, councilwoman staff is going to get back to the parks department as to whether or not she can make that funding available. And based on the feedback we've heard around this issue specifically here and this issue generally in other places, if the timer is set to go off at a reasonable hour, there shouldn't be too much of an issue with um, surrounding people being concerned about noise. I don't think anybody is suggesting that the timer be set to go off at three o'clock in the morning, more like nine or 10, so that people can play when it's dark, but not when it's really late. Does that sound about right to everybody? Yes. Okay. So hey, I just want to make one more point, Liz, sorry. Um, if this does get funded for 24, what we could do is put the footings and the conduit into this project for lighting if it does get funded. Otherwise, the whole project will be held up for another year if we were going to do it all together. Right. Um, okay. So thank you very much for pointing that out. Um, so I think that um, just, just to be clear, if it's possible to get the funding for this, then one way to do that is to stop this project, pause it for a year, make it one big project, which includes the renovation with lighting, and then it goes forward. The downside of doing that is it makes it all take a lot longer and the expense for the renovation goes up the longer you wait. So if it's possible to get the funding, but as a separate project, this project can include the space holder for the lighting, which then gets installed later. So everybody gets the basketball that they want sooner rather than later and then the lighting would follow by you know a year um and we can include all of that language in the resolution so that that extra work does happen in the context of this project but this project doesn't get held up waiting for that other piece does that make sense to people or it could be tiered, Liz, uh, like they could start working on it. And like she stated, they leave the stuff ready so that if any additional funds are added, they have the, the capacity to cause stalling it. Yeah, is, that is, I don't think doing Domingo, anybody that is that is literally what I just said. So thank you for that. So um, we cannot restore the existing lighting. The poles are that is correct. They're out of, it would be a total redo. That is correct. Total That's redo. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. That is correct. We that wouldn't. Is the correct. poles would not be in the same position. Is, They'll look different. That is correct. Different height, different everything. Okay. <laughs> All of yeah. these things are understood. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Can you guys pull up the? 
the image that showed that showed the gate. The, the gate of the. You're talking about the sidewalk fencing or the ten oh, foot no. gate in the twelve foot fencing. Wait a minute. Those are the fences that are going to be in the front. These are five foot. These are five foot six. This is uh, a five foot six fence in the Bronx. You wouldn't have these stone things. You would just have a uh, uh, structure like this. Okay, that's going to be the fence that are going to be in the front of the court. Oh, in front of the courts, it's chain link fence. Let me get the diagram here. Okay. To yeah. be clear, this project will have two kinds of fencing. There will be a 12 foot fence that goes largely across from west to east behind the basketball, the northern uh, basketball hoop. And at the eastern connection of that 12 foot fence to the other fencing along the eastern perimeter, there will be 10 foot gates. Can we see the, the 10 foot one is going to be right in front of the court? It's not going to be right in front. It's going to be uh, at the eastern perimeter of the court. Yes, yes, that one. The 12 yeah. foot one. Um, Kiana is like every basketball here. court. Every yeah, it just court. goes across yeah. like this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but there's somebody here that wants to see it. Okay. Yeah. Are you good? They're putting it in the resolution to remove it. Yeah. Okay, so with that. So with that, like, does the. Does the. Oh, here? Here? <laughs> so with um taking off the, the court for the juniors, will we expand the space of the court? to make it a more full-size court? So to be clear, um, no. And the reason why the answer is no is if you do that and you move the, so if you make it bigger, then you're going, then that means the end of the fence is gonna go right into the middle of the mural. So I'm not looking at the mural, but instead of having the fence go at the end of the mural, it's gonna cut off like part of his face. So for folks who are concerned about not wanting to have a tree block the mural, and I certainly agree with that, I'm, I don't understand why you would wanna have a 12 foot chain link fence cut off the mural. Okay, and I have another question. So the front of the park was the security for that. There's not going to be another fence there? There will be oh, yeah. a five foot, six inch fence. Wow. So there are two fences. There's a 12 foot chain link fence behind the basketball, which keeps basketballs from flying out into the street. And then there will be a five foot, six inch high a picket fence okay. at the sidewalk. All right. I have a question really quickly. Do you guys have a mock up of what that looks like? Like, is there a picture here? Yeah. Picture of the fence? Oh, the, the, oh, the, the front entrance. Under oh, the so this is, um, this is a five foot six inch fence with pickets like we would do right on the sidewalk. So it would look like this. <laughs> and you guys don't have a picture of it like you guys have for the- Largo, Largo to your rendering. Right here. This is, uh, it's, um, I mean, I'm I'm five foot six. So it's, it's would be here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so give me, give me one second. I'm gonna go on mute real quick. Okay, so while they're figuring that out, are there other questions among the attendees? Other questions among the panelists? Other questions from the committee? So pending this issue of the, of the fence, um, it sounds like 
the changes that we would like to see to this design are removing the, the bucket hoops, um, adding back in some kind of seal coat games, but not hopscotch. Scully, you know, the, the ladybugs were cute, but I, okay. I understand the objection. So, mm -hmm. you know, clearly having some kind of pavement markings makes sense, but not those pavement markings. And, um, and then the, the, thir the third thing would be um, using a single rim, not a double rim. Uh, uh, the fourth thing would be the whole issue with the lighting uh, and, you know, including whatever the appropriate space holders for modified lighting um, and with that uh, project to, to come as part of a separate project. Um, and I think that, and to, and to uh, not have that, to, to not have that, um, that tree that's by the mural. Um, and Domingo, you had said something about removing a bench, but the reason why you had suggested removing that third bench was because you wanted to move the fence. But if you're not moving the fence back, then it sounds like it was more Liz around um, like similar to what Danny was saying uh, there. Like it's it's about not obstructing a memorial place. Right. You get what okay. I'm trying to say? So sure. the last thing you want is to be like, of course. Yeah. You know, so that that was the only logic behind Did that. You, like, uh, hold on. I, I'm sorry to interrupt. But w while we're having this conversation, can somebody can uh, whoever's controlling the parks slide? Can you move back to the slide that shows the, the bench, the seating and the memorial? Um, uh, the rendering, the rendering that shows. Yeah. I'm trying to find a better picture of the mural because I it may not be it may not be placed that accurately. It's, 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 it's totally fine. I understand yeah. it might not be placed that accurately. <laughs> so here's my question, um, sort of taking into account what Domingo has said and what Danny has said in terms of you know honoring the memorial and also honoring the um, honoring the mural and honoring the memorial rather than having that style of bench why not have the kind of bench that doesn't have a back because it seems to me and I, I could be wrong but it seems to me that a person who wants to engage with a mm -hmm. memorial might want to do that sitting down not standing up so rather than having a bench that has a back where you're turning your back to the to the memorial, if it's the kind of bench that doesn't have a back, people can sit and engage very directly with the mural. And that kind of brings people in um, without requiring them to stand. That's a cool idea. That's a very cool idea, Liz. Thank you. So uh, I can certainly add a uh, change, I mean, as an aging person, I like backs on my seating, but I also recognize the value of the flexible seating that doesn't have uh, a back. Look, check it out, Liz. I like kind of like did a little drawing. Liz. Okay. Yes. Hey, okay. So here, um, they're saying that they would like the outside fence, the fence that is the entrance to the park. Yes. So a little bit higher. Okay. Okay. So the parks department, the current fence that's there now is like an eight foot fence. And I think we all agreed that that eight foot fence is so high that it's just, it kind of makes it feel like a prison. Um, the park I think department- I we agreed upon last time. We didn't agree on that. A prison? The word that multiple people used was carceral, uh, that it was very high. So, I mean, parks can do a seven foot fence. I don't think they construct eight foot fences anymore. There, would, yeah, there goes seven. Would a seven foot fence work for folks? Yes. 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 Okay. 
Let me ask you this. Is there anybody who objects to a seven foot fence? No. No. Okay. So then I got to say, I was, I, I was waiting for someone to ask for a higher fence because if nobody asked for it, I was going to say, how do you feel about a higher fence? Because that was a holdover from, uh, from last, uh, from last month. Um, so uh, Leslie and Laura, I understand that Parks usually does a four foot fence that it was a little stretch to go with this five foot six fence. Uh, but, you know, folks clearly want a higher fence. So we are going to include uh, in the rezo a whereas establishing why we would like a higher fence and uh, resolved requesting that there be a higher fence and that we don't actually approve of the design unless there is a higher fence. Okay, we, we, hear, we hear you, Liz, um, and we will, bring, we will bring this back to our commissioner. Um, this is something that she needs to, to make a decision on um, because usually we don't go higher than four, Five and a half is usually her limit, um, but we will bring it back to her. So do put it in the resolution and we will do that. At the risk of sounding a little bit testy, I would welcome the commissioner to live next door to a basketball court that by a five and a half foot fence and ask her how she feels about a five and a half foot fence versus a seven foot fence. Um, but yes, we can totally include that in, okay. in the reso. So... Seeing no additional hands, just to recap in the interest of clarity. Wait, Liz. Oh, there are more hands. No, I just wanted to clarify something else too. Yes. Uh, we should not perform the project. If, for the lighting, we should not perform the project. Like we can deal with that on the, with DOT and park, but let the project just go. I don't think that we right. need to extend it for another year. Yep, totally, totally. I, I, I got that vibe already. So to be clear, um, we, in the aggregate, the committee, the community, including everybody at the barbershop, um, likes, likes the, um, the new proposal with the following changes in no particular order. Single rim, not a double rim. <laughs> um, change the third bench to have no back, a seven foot fence, not a five and a half foot fence. So I won't cover the mural. Uh, space, yeah, space holders for lighting in a project to come later. And then clarifying that, you know, that uh, what we would like that later project to include sports lighting with a timer and the recommendation that the lights uh, be turned off at, you know, nine or 10. It doesn't actually, it doesn't have to be quite that specific. That'll be in the resolution for when that project comes to us. Um, that we would like uh, to remove the bucket hoop. Um, that the tree be some, that, uh, that there not be a tree planted in front of the mural. Um, Liz, or and, anything and that, seal, that... Hold on. And that the seal coating um, include... Uh, that there be the seal coating for like Scully or some more age-appropriate games, not uh, little, little kid games. Um, Domingo, I'm anticipating your comment. Hold on just a second. I want to make sure okay. I don't miss that last point. And the removing of the no, little no, no, bucket, steel bucket. Yeah, I, I did say already, remove the bucket hoops. Um, so one of the things that uh, this design also achieves that's very important is there's, uh, there's, there's more soft surface and less hard surface than we currently have in the, in the, the site right now. So that makes for better water drainage. 
Um, I understand that you want to make sure that nothing obstructs the mural. And I think Parks gets that loud and clear in terms of whatever the landscaping choices are. But before, and, and, I, and I totally understand why folks are advocating for removing that tree that's right in front of the mural. And I think, you know, we get that. Um, but I think that it is not a good idea to remove the landscaping that's in front of the mural because they can plant it with something that's low that doesn't grow to be like willowy and three feet high. You don't want that because it's gonna mess with the mural. Mm -hmm. But it's a good idea to have planting rather than asphalt because that's gonna give water some place to go when it rains. And if the water doesn't have some place to go when it rains, like dirt and grass and plantings, then it's gonna stay on the asphalt and it's going to destroy the, the pavement and really mess with the playing surface and reduce the useful life of the playing surface. And I think nobody wants that. So- yeah, I, I agree, Liz. It, it was more around uh, daddy's point uh, to be conscious of like, when you do the plannings to have a certain uh, area for like any artist that wants to do any touch up, it doesn't uh, prevent uh, anything from, you know what I'm trying to say, Liz? Like, yeah, from, no, that, that yeah. totally makes sense. And that's a, that's a landscaping choice that, um, that, you know, we certainly can, we can put into the resolution that we want to make sure that the landscaping, um, hold on, make sure that the landscaping doesn't, interfere in any way uh, with the mural, both in terms of engaging with the mural uh, as a viewer and in terms of any kind of maintenance. But I don't think you want to not have landscaping. Did I? I completely agree, Liz. Perfect. It was just around uh, making Got it that. accessible for an artist to touch it up. That's all I was yep. going to recommend. OK. Liz, I, I didn't even know that about that that like dirt out over there that it could cause as a as a sewage. I, I would have thought that if if over over flooded or anything like that 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 whole area would seep out onto the basketball court. That was my thought more also uh, on why just like even closing off that whole area and just like keeping an asphalt, you know. No, that's so one of the things that that I think we we don't really we we fail to appreciate about built environment versus porous environment is when you have a porous environment, water can flow back into the ground. If you have asphalt, there's kind of nowhere for it to go. I mean, it'll run off eventually and if it's tilted, but if you have dirt and grass and plantings, the earth can absorb the water. So um, yeah, I think that provides a good balance. All right, so with all of those caveats in mind, um, I need everybody on the committee to turn on your cameras so that I can see you. Uh, first of all, I just wanna get a final thumbs up from the barbershop. Are we, we liking that? Did I miss anything? I'm not seeing thumbs up. Okay, can you, um, can you end the screen share so that I can go back to seeing a better gallery view? Because everybody's really small. All right, folks in the barbershop, are we, is that a hand or is that a thumbs up? Oh, no, Liz, wait a minute, I'm trying to make you bigger. Wait. No, no, I can, I can see you, can you see me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so do we agree with this as as modified? Are we happy? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Fantastic. Consensus <laughs> is a beautiful thing. All right. And from the committee, we've got Alexis is a thumbs up, Luan is a thumbs up, Danny's a thumbs up, Mancita's a thumbs up, Naima's a thumbs up, Barbara. 
Domingo? Where'd Domingo go? Thumbs up, thumbs up. Okay, Mencita, Domingo, Naima, Alexis, Barbara, Annie, Luana. I'm a thumbs up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's eight in favor. Is there anybody here who is a member of the committee that I missed? Fantastic. Okay, everybody, thank you so much. Thank you. Democracy is a beautiful thing. Um, I will get this to uh, to you know this will go to the to the full board at our meeting uh, two weeks from tonight. Um, well, let me just mute ourselves. Give me one second. Thank you, Liz. I'm gonna log off, okay? And thank you so much. And thank you again, Freddie. That's like super appreciated. All right. Whew. Well, you know, it took a while, but we got where we needed to go. And thank you everybody for all of your, um, for all of your input. Uh, that was, that was a beautiful thing. Uh, so it is 827. Uh, I want to move to the final agenda item, which is looking at 2023 and uh, what goals we may have for the coming year. And my question to you is, you know, what are the things that we want to keep doing? What are the things we want to keep our eyes on? What are the things that we feel like we've missed that we should have been paying attention to? Um, I do know that one thing that I wanna circle back to that we kind of didn't do much with last year is um, some of these place namings within parks. Um, you know, we had a really long conversation uh, I, over a year ago, about a year and three months ago around place namings and how we honor the fact that we are, we are on stolen land um, and how we reflect uh, place namings. Uh, I don't wanna get back into that conversation tonight, but I want to make sure that we get back into that conversation this year. Uh, what are the things that are on people's minds? Domingo. I think it'd be cool is like, um, like, like truly like incorporating that cultural component, you know, now that we have artists in the committee, uh, I think it'd be dope. And, and, and Jennifer, you know, like figuring out alternative ways of being able to work with uh, spaces within our community and really like artifying it. Like, I think it was pretty dope what, what DOT did on Amsterdam along a lot of the, 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 the space that they had on the streets of, of colorifying it and bringing some vibrance into our community. Uh, just contemplating, like, how could we work with, like, for instance, artists within our community instead of bringing folks from Brooklyn or out of state, but seeing how we could get these RFPs to people from within our community to start really beautifying internally, you know? And I think that'll be a dope, uh, addition to the cultural component, which I'm willing to support with, uh, which is uh, making sure we work with the city agencies on on getting RFPs to artists within our communities to beautify spaces like basketball courts, walls within uh, outer perimeters of parks. So instead of having like these dull walls, these empty walls, just bringing in the vibrance and culture of our community would be pretty dope. Thank you. I love that. Um, not to put folks on the spot. Um, okay, I see uh, I see Jennifer. Just to respond to that, there is right now a call for artists that DOT put out. I don't know if people saw that and trying to, to find I it. I think no I was going to mention it. I was going to mention it. It's, oh, uh, it's a to-do. Uh, they, uh, they're going to give about uh, up to $20,000 uh, to paint assets um, in your neighborhood. Yeah. yeah, and that's uh, one of them that I definitely want to apply to. And yeah, but it, it'd also be cool with Jennifer to do it with parks, though. It, basketball sure. courts painted on the floor, you know? 
I think we we've done that. I don't know if you've seen it, Domingo, um, at different uh, basketball courts. Okay. Cool. Thank you. I can send you the info. It's pretty Please. cool. I and I think that. I think Laura, you know, to Laura's credit, she was trying to do something here with the natural. The 186 three courts has these. It acts like a natural sundial, which is really phenomenal, right? It's got this natural progression of the light, and she was trying to reflect that in the surface treatment of the basketball court. You know, capitalize on like the its intrinsic um, coolness. Um, but yeah, I can send you other courts that we've done if you're interested, and I can send out the the temporary art proposal. Thank you. Thank um, you. Before I get to Danny, um, and not to put y'all on the spot, but I want to call on Mancita and Luana. You're the newest members on the committee. Domingo, you don't count because you were already on the committee. Technically, you're the newest member. But you know, you're just so Mencita and Luana, you're new on this committee. And I'm just curious, like you're on this committee because you wanted to be on this committee. So what is it that you're hoping to bring in terms of art, culture, open space, recreation, parks? And um, I'm putting you both on the spot and whoever wants to answer first, jump in and then the next one can jump in after. I'll, I'll go first, um, kind of to piggyback off of what Domingo was saying. I'd like to see us engage more culturally, not just with the visual arts, but you know how the People's Theater is, there's a theater that, or a museum that's being built soon. And it'd be nice to figure out ways to like engage with the community more. And yeah, to engage more with the community with like cultural theater stuff, film, poetry, oral traditions, just so that we can hear more of all the different cultures in the community, that would be really great. Um, yeah, I mean, visual arts are awesome too. That's my background. Um, but I do think there are ways that we can share more storytelling. I'd be down for ways to show that, yeah. And okay. use the space. And that also goes back to like, yes, this is stolen land, but I've seen um, Curtis, from the Lenape um, organization. Yes. I've seen them perform at the Whitney. I've seen him perform up here at the Dykeman River Club. And I just love his way of storytelling and engaging and bringing, bringing us all in. And if we could get more folks like that, and, and since we have a platform to let people in the community know about those things, that's what I'd be interested in. Sorry, I'm kind of sick, so. No, no, I'm, uh... I love this feedback and thank you and feel better. Thank you. Uh, Luana. Hello everybody, happy new year. I'm still trying to learn. I've, I've learned so much in this first year uh, on, on the community board. I'm a lifelong Inwood resident. I live across the street from Fort Tryon Park. I actually go into my PJs because I can and drink my coffee and just like breathe. That's my the way that I practice mindfulness. Um, so I'm very fortunate to still be living in the neighborhood where I was born and raised. Um, I think my only, I, I really want to try to bring language access, not just to parks, but to the entire community board. I know there are a lot of people that are interested in becoming involved, but because of language barriers, they don't have access to the information. I know that a lot of the print material that goes out is bilingual, but I'm, I'm taking lead from these debates that happen around the medieval festival that a lot of people in the community don't even know that this festival existed. I myself didn't know as a child. So I'm wondering if that's a function of creating the space where language access can be a vehicle to um, participate more, like to a more kind of integrated participation. I know that for the medieval festival, I engaged the Hispanic society and they were able to bring a bilingual booth to, to the, to the festival. So in terms of the committee itself, I'm wondering, I'm thinking about it, but since you asked me, Liz, I'm thinking out loud. <laughs> thinking out loud is good. Um, thinking out loud is good. You know, this is not the kind of conversation where we 
where there's a question mm -hmm. and, a, and an, a definitive answer. Right. It's more like the question is, what questions should we be asking? Exactly. How do we allow those questions to guide what we're doing? Mm -hmm. and, you know, there's a lot to be said for planning, um, planning times of self-reflection. So right. I appreciate, and she's not on the call anymore, but I appreciate um, Kathy asking each of the chairs to do this uh, in their committees. And it seems to me that taking January to, you know, this year and every year to take a look at what are we going to do for the year? Um, I also like the idea of thinking in terms of the calendar, um, like what are the things that we know we should be thinking about? So one of the things that we've done for many years, although we didn't do it last year, is in April or May, we typically would have a meeting, sometimes jointly with public safety, where we would invite members of the police department, you know, representatives from the police department, representatives from parks enforcement, representatives from um, sanitation to talk about sort of some of the issues around um, enforcement and education as we go into the summer months for better stewardship, better maintenance, that kind of thing. So maybe we wanna bring that meeting back um, to do in April or May to kind of start thinking about that. Um, we often in May would be a little bit more focused on arts and culture because June is Art Stroll Month. So this is the Parks and Cultural Affairs Committee. So we would be a little bit more focused on that. Um, are there other like very time specific uh, topics that we should be looking to try and calendar um, in in our meetings? I mean, obviously we're 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 somewhat reactive because unlike most committees, we have so many meetings where we're hearing plans and proposals from the Parks Department about some kind of capital project in a park or playground, and we need to vet that and provide feedback. So, you know, that does take a lot of our time. Um, and we tend to be operating on the parks department's schedule, not because we're at their beck and call and not because we can't plan for ourselves, but because we want to respond as quickly as possible so that these projects can get moving because they're already really long timelines. Um, we know that in September, we have a preliminary conversation about what are our uh, capital and expense goals. And then in October, we talk about our rankings. So that's always a big thing. Um, but are there other time specific things that we wanna, you know, build into our schedule. And again, it, that's not an answer. That's, that's not something that we necessarily have to come up with tonight. If there are things that people think of and they want to, you know, email me, we can roll that into the discussion next month. Hi, Liz. I would actually like uh, to. Who's, who's this newest member? Oh, this is my nephew. I'm 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 stuck with aunt not stuck. I volunteered for aunt right now. Um is, or I guess one of the goals, something that I would like to learn as a member. Something I would like to learn as a member is uh, a little bit more about stewardship of, of public spaces and how we can get um traditional uh, how we can get members of the community that usually don't participate in those kind of stewardship initiatives to get more involved so what I mean for example we have we have the amazing friends of Inwood Hill Park right um that uh Sally Fisher was leading uh, how how uh, how are organizations like that developed and 
um, maintained? And where, where are there areas that can use uh, more stewardship of, of folks in the community to take responsibility? Maybe if they could do something like that, that would be great. Okay, thank you. I love we that. Can, um, I, can, I can do a presentation on existing stewardship because a lot happens, but it might help all of us understand maybe where there are gaps. Um, and then I, I can also give, you know, sort of an overview on here's how we're filling those gaps. Here's other civic partners that we've brought in, or here's nonprofit partners that we've brought in, some of the corporate partners that we've brought in. Um, and then you can tell us, here's why we don't think people are coming out to the open call days, but um, we have thousands of hours of, vol of volunteer hours being invested in our parks, which is phenomenal. Inwood, Isham, J. Hood Wright Park, Highbridge Park, um, Fort Tryon. Um, I think those are sort of the El Capayan Triangle has some groups affiliated with it, Juan, Juan Pablo Duarte, but um, I'm happy to sort of give an overview of what is currently happening. And then that might help us discern, okay, where are their gaps? Who, What are new ways of reaching out that might help draw in new participants in the stewardship? Um, is it like Luana said, is it a language access thing? Or is it who's doing the inviting, right? Um, I'd love to, mm -hmm. if, if we can find a month where we can, have that as an agenda item, I think that'd be phenomenal. I, I love that. Could we do that in March? Because sure. because February seems too soon. Um, and April, I feel like we might want to try and do, sorry for that siren. I think we want to try and do a public safety, sanitation, looking towards summer planning thing, possibly in April, possibly in May. So how about March? Sure. And and I, because I don't, I can't do it. I can't um, put things in. For Danny and Domingo, I in the last question, I just tacked on here are the creative courts program. Here's the temporary public art program. Um, and then here are the current exhibits. So you can see the kind of stuff that's out there. And Jennifer, sorry, I just wanted to add one more thing based oh, on what... Sure said earlier, am I pronounce, pronouncing it correctly, Luana? Is that the, the correct way to pronounce your name? Oh, yes, Luana, yes, yes. <laughs> like you said earlier, um, there, there are so many people that are volunteering and uh, I would just like to just get also more of like the Spanish speaking and different language speaking areas of the community. Also, just because if people learn more about stewardship, then it can also help us with other quality of life issues that comes up a lot in this committee in terms of, you know, noise and trash and different things like that. Um, I, I, I think long, it's like a long-term plan just to build more uh, awareness and, and, and there's more responsibility around that. So just wanted to put that out there and thank you. Cool. That's a great idea. All right, I wanna try and wrap this up. Uh, so I'm gonna see, uh, actually before I take Danny and Barbara, I'm gonna recognize Alexis cause she hasn't really said much. Um, what you got? Yeah, I like to save my voice for when it really <laughs> is gonna make an impact. I'm very excited about having a joint committee meeting with safety and public trans and other uh, committees. Because the fact that Jennifer Hoppe still speaks to me is amazing because I drive her crazy <laughs> about people and their unleashed dogs. And I know in my neck of the woods over here on Edgecombe by Morris Jamel Mansion, it has become uh, increasingly dangerous. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. We, we actually have a complaint at the 186th Street Courts being used as a, a dog run also Alexis. Wow. No one brought that up today, but um, someone put their own lock on the site to prevent people from using it. Wow. Uh, yeah, but see that site can be, at least can be locked. I mean, you know, okay. I'm not even gonna get into it. All right. Uh, 
Barbara? I wanted to say, I would hope as a committee that we become, uh, I, I don't wanna use the word visionary, but um, look forward looking. For example, I think in the committee, the fact that the Ann Loftus uh, reconstruction is very different than, and rather than just a remake, or mm -hmm. that we're creating the new park by the Dykeman number one station. And there's certain projects I'd like to see happen that would create something new in the neighborhood. I very much want to see somewhere or somehow around um, the Dykeman houses that we create a museum that would be a tourist attraction and would be something that properly memorializes the existence of the Negro Leagues. And I see no reason why we can't somehow find a space, a, a way in this neighborhood to create uh, Kansas City has a big museum for the Negro Leagues. And in many ways, the Dykeman Field were much more important because also it was the start of Dominican baseball because the, one of the heads of the, Domin of the leagues was Dominican and did the original recruitments to there. It's not a whole discussion of that tonight. But that said, that would be something where we would create something unique, relevant to the neighborhood, relevant to the populations that live here, and it doesn't exist now. Uh, the Stephen Levin, the things that were done over by PS5 of the Stephen Levin Garden is another example of something that didn't exist before. The planting of the cherry trees along the Harlem River Drive didn't exist before and has been a tremendous exist, uh, addition to the neighborhood. So I would hope that in our committee, we come up or help nurture those kinds of didn't exist befores mm -hmm. that now are part of the neighborhood. We have more cherry trees. I think it's four more, correct me if I'm wrong, Jennifer, than there are at the, um, uh, the um, what do you call it? Not the pond, the, um, uh, in Washington, DC, the- Tidal um, Basin. The, yeah, the-, the um, Just, just uh, a point of clarification. <laughs> yeah. 52 trees were cut down to create the cherry tree esplanade. So I'm not necessarily in favor of it. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. Anyway, so all right. We're getting, we're, we're, getting what far, we're getting a little far. We're getting a little far afield, but thank you for that. And I do think we actually have a, a good track record of that. And, uh, you know, to keep on doing that. Um, yes, Monsignor Ked Bathroom, you all were yes. idle. Another so, yeah. one. That yeah, excellent work. Okay, excellent I'm work. gonna I'm gonna let Danny get the last word. There's a quick question uh, to Jennifer. Um, would it be us or who would it be um, to start up programs to actually like do a call for artists and that for uh, specifically for the parks because I know DOT has them. I wonder if if the parks has them, and I remember seeing several art installations in front of the uh, the rain garden. Like I've seen some installations there. I've seen some installations inside of, of, of Fort Tryon Park. Um, like wh where, do, where do we even start with something like that? Like we can like have something like every year, uh, a call for artists for like, let's say all the basketball courts or all the handball courts or all the walking parks, like, you know, art installations and stuff like that. So, Danny, I don't know if you saw in the answered section. Um, I had to tack on to Rosa Yolanda Pineda's comment, but uh, I put the you know the current installations and in, and in exhibitions page at parks because you can you can see the type <laughs> of art that you know gets installed in the different parks throughout the city, and then the temporary public art program. Um, page that shows the process um, and how we've gotten art in parks in the mm -hmm. past. Sometimes like the Claire Weiss Emerging Artist was the $10,000 award. That donor um, had, I guess, an installation, funded an installation in each borough. And because Claire Weiss, who had been the public art curator for parks, her park was Fort Tryon. The last place they did it was Fort Tryon. So that's why we had that, they funded that artist. They did a call for artists and 
Zach Landsberg's um, Margaret Corbin effigy was selected and that sculpture was up for a year. Sometimes it's um, Noma, like Noma has done, oh, I guess it was Oh Sit, um, that call for artists with the sculptures in Inwood Hill Park. Um, Parks had funding to do one up at the High Bridge Water Tower Terrace. So, so sometimes the, the location is dictated by the arts organization that has the funding and the insurance and then does a call for artists. Sometimes it's by a donor. Um, I'm not sure what's funding the DOT. So, yeah, because I wonder I wonder if it would be because they would just take one department or one division that just like, handles that kind of stuff and just right. actually so works with let me speak to that a little bit. So Jennifer, yeah. uh, Jennifer did uh, put some information in the chat and I am uh, just copying, uh, not in the chat, in the Q and A. So what I'm doing in case you missed it, um, not you personally, just like anybody missed it, I'm copying that into an email and I'll send it out at the end of the meeting because I just can't multitask. Um, but there's, there's uh, all of what Jennifer mentioned in terms of public art in parks and then DOT has a public art project and that's what funds. So the art in front of, on, the, on that plaza, um, in front of the Riverside Inwood Neighborhood Garden, that's actually part of DOT's public art project. Um, and DOT you know, has a budget for that. And when, when you see art in um, the medians in streets, that's DOT. So parks is gonna be art in parks and things that are on in the green streets, that's gonna be DOT. And in the, in the medians, that's gonna be DOT. And then the third um, sort of public art funding that we sometimes see is um, done actually by the Broadway Mall Association, which is a nonprofit organization that mostly covers the Upper West Side, but to the extent that there are the malls in Broadway, uh, it does go up through West Harlem and into the lower end of Washington Heights. And when we see occasional art installations in um, uh, Ilka Danya Bayan Square and in um, uh, Mitchell Park, so at 157th Street and at 160. Uh, Sixth Street, those are actually funded typically by the Broadway Malls Association. So it's a little bit of a hodgepodge and different agencies depending on where the public art actually is. But yeah, I would say definitely um, prioritizing and highlighting uh, and talking about public art and ways of engaging in public art and bringing back public art and advocating for more funding for public art can totally be a priority. Is that something that could be as a as a new business, uh, making a committee uh, to find art and stuff like that? You know, like uh, how DOT has it. I don't know. So I think it falls on the culture, right? This like under this committee. Right? I mean, yeah, no, it would be so. It, I mean, it certainly would be centralize all that kind of stuff. I, I mean, don't know. How do we put this? So you know, I love talking about this stuff. Um, but I think what you're really speaking to is, um, is a funding thing. And so making it, that's, that's why that conversation that we have in the fall around funding is really important. So I think continuing to talk about um, what we're funding and why and what our funding priorities are is really important. Um, Yeah, I mean, I suppose that you know, it occurs to me that if you there are two different, we do our 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 budget funding, our expense and capital priorities in the fall, but the city council does its budget in the spring. So part of what you may wanna do as your own personal advocacy and part of what we may wanna do as a committee 
is push for a resolution that demands 1% for parks and 1% for art, which is um, you know, a pretty longstanding conversation uh, when we had when when a consortium of arts organizations hosted um, DCLA commissioner Lori Cumbo at a, a breakfast held at the Hispanic Society, uh, not the Hispanic Society, the uh, the arts arts and letters. Um, one of the things that we talked about is on the one hand, New York City's Department of Cultural Affairs has like a $470 million budget, uh, which is larger than NISCA's. It's larger than the New York State Cultural Affairs budget. And it's the largest public cultural affairs budget in the country other than uh, National Endowment for the Arts, but it's the largest like municipal or state um, arts budget, public arts budget in the country. And it is slightly less than half a percent. It's like four tenths of a percent. So I think even though it's it's even though it's the largest budget that the city has ever had, and even though that budget is larger than any other city or any state, it's still not enough. So it might be that what we want to do as a committee is advocate for you know a strong one percent for art campaign. I don't know. That was a long answer. Sorry about that. But I already, I believe there already is a campaign, Liz, for for the art stuff. There is there is a one percent for parks campaign. I don't think there's a formal. Like the phrase one percent for art is is well known, but I don't know if there's a formal campaign. I don't know. Um, I actually think it would be great not to volunteer you for something, but Danny, if you want to find out if there actually is an active existing one percent for art campaign, and if there is, how do we join in on that? How do we sign up on that? Is there you know is there a petition? Is there an initiative? Are there like-minded people who feel the same way that we do? Do we want to start that if it's not already existing? These are good questions. And I'd be happy to help Danny facilitate that because I do have my contacts at DCLA and I'd be happy to help use them. I love this. Okay, it's 8.59. I would love to eat dinner. Motion to adjourn, Liz. Yeah, this has been super productive and I am really second. grateful. I second it. Well, we've got a motion to adjourn by Domingo with seconds simultaneously from uh, Danny and Barbara. So all those in favor, please click the leave button. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Thank you all. Happy New Thank Year you. once again, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy